Welcome, one and all, to episode 109 of Peace Talk. Thank God we were able to do this. The dark forces were impeding our progress, but um, I haven't heard one complaint from anybody uh, or anyone get antsy. So I uh, really do appreciate y'all. And I'm really grateful. I'm reading right now, and Hangout on Air is going away later this year. So I'm gonna have to find a new streaming service. Shout out to Astro Phoenix. I got OBS, so we'll be good. Shout out to Sweet Seat Spirit, Jessica. Um, I have a really amazing guest. I think many of you will be quite familiar with her already, as she is definitely a very amazing part of the Billion Dollar Vibe Tribe. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> I love the Vibe Tribe. Lisa, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing, Peace Dealer? I'm great. How do you say your last name? Well, my name is Lisa Luann Sprankle. Luann, okay. Yeah, Sprankle. my, my oh, middle, I, I just go by my first and middle name. Yeah, yeah. that's what's up. That's really what's up. And uh, shout out to Luna G, uh, who's watching with us. Shout out to Carolyn, Chris. Um, yeah, where do where you live, Lisa? I live in central Pennsylvania, um, a town called Sunbury. Um, yeah, uh, very ancient old area. Um, I live in probably one of the oldest sections of this town. I live right along the Susquehanna River. Huge channel body of water. I bet. And for those who aren't aware, what is your sun, moon, and rising? Um, I am an airy sun, a Libra rising and a Capricorn moon, part of the Cat Moon Club. Yes, super powerful. Cat Moon Club, that's what's up. <laughs> I, I, love that. I love that you're all cardinal. So I've learned that like when certain people are all fixed, they're definitely royalty, like they're, they're kings and queens. And then when people are like sun, moon and rising and immutable sign, they're like prince or princess or rather just like the, the 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 ultimate magi the the lord of perception but but um when you have sun moon and rising and cardinal signs i get this like general feel like you're definitely um uh I, see i want to i want to come up with the working term because general is is one term but i know it's something deeper but i know it's like a total personification of power well, and um, I definitely do appreciate that. I have my Saturn in Cancer. Mm. So I have a Grand Cardinal cross in my chart. Oh, you have Saturn in Cancer? Wow. So it does. Yeah, that, that Mars and Saturn opposition. I thought I was dying last week. <laughs> I thought I was dying. I don't know why. The Mars and Saturn opposition that yes. has been occurring right now, and that's true. Wow. And right now, aren't you having that's a Mercury amazing. and Saturn? Isn't there a Mercury and Saturn opposition going on right now, too? Um, In, in my chart or in, in the chart? Well, in just in astrology in general. Didn't that just take place, too, with Mercury opposing Saturn? Now it's opposing Pluto, I think. Oracle Clarity, I'm going to make a special video about that. So I got you. And yes, it is, which is not easy. Um, I've been just feeling more negative energy projection, Aww. especially especially when evidenced by my own insecurities. Like a lot of it was coming from within me. So it's it's uh, been quite interesting to say the less. But it's nothing that uh, I'm too like mad or sad about because it definitely is exposing and revealing. But I was going to say it's something about you, Lisa, that I feel so familiar. Like your energy feels not only familiar, but like I guess our souls really know each other because I would. This is yo. I'm telling you, I started watching you two years ago, and instantly, like I connected, and then um, I started meeting other people from the Vibe Tribe that had had uh, reconnected through my YouTube. <laughs> so that whole thing was just a leap of faith. I just stepped out and heard spirit tell me to pull cards and I immediately rebuked it. I was like, oh no, you can't be telling me to pull tarot cards. 
<laughs> like, oh my God. are you kidding me? I came from a very religious background. So um, that's kind of a, a firm foundation that I've always had. But yeah, when I heard Spirit telling you to start pulling tarot cards that Spirit needed me in that community to help people, I was like, you got to be joking. <laughs> And it's amazing because um, our spells Inc. said past life romance. I'm not gonna lie, kind of, it kind of feels like that. I, I feel that's the kind of familiar I feel too. Um, do you, where's your south node, Christian? My south node's in Gemini. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. So we do have some past uh -huh. life energy. Let me, let me. I think it's like 28 or 29 degrees. 28 or 29. Okay, that's yeah, because that's I'm like two enough. degrees in Sagittarius for my north node. One point or like close to the two degree mark for my my north node. So your north node is two degrees back. Yes. Two. Right around. So your area. south node. So your south node is actually going to be two degrees Gemini, but it's still Gemini. So mm -hmm. that's still uh, that's actually that's actually closer to my rising sign. Than it is uh, my son, which is still so it kind of blends both of those. Which that that's why no wonder it's like it's very. Do you have anything in Leo perchance? I have zero in Leo or Virgo, nothing. Or Aquarius. I ha my Mars is in Aquarius. Ah, so your Mars is on my North Node. There we go. That's interesting. <laughs> Word. And I mean, um, we're gonna talk about blue flame integration. I'm kind of going out out of order in the questions here, but uh, congratulations, because recently, you know, it's interesting now to know, which I'll ask more in depth, like you were called to this and you didn't want to at first, but you quickly got hailed as one of the like top tarot card readers on YouTube, which, which is really yeah, awesome. Yeah, within five or six months, the guy actually had messaged me and said, he sent me a message, you said, um, you were one of the, I only watched one of your videos he said, and your intuitive ability and the way you read cards, he said, I put you on, I, I didn't even hesitate to watch anymore. He said, and I've been watching deep occult stuff for like 35 years, he's been studying it. Yeah, so uh, it's definitely a, a gift um, yeah. that I didn't even realize I possessed. I, I knew my intuition was really up there, but... Um, <laughs> it's dope, so I wanna go back to that analogy. Like if you have a, oh, she's an action initiator, she's definitely true. Um, it's, and, and shout out to Mars and Aquarius, because y'all are amazing, extraordinary. It's interesting, because um, bringing back that analogy, like if you have majority fixed signs, then that's gonna indicate, let me share this link. That's gonna indicate more so, you know, a lot of strength. People with uh, a lot of fixed sign energy in the chart, they're gonna have energy and strength to coral on. And then uh, uh, people with, uh, you know, pure mutable sign energies, they're super magical. So they definitely know how to, you know, change situations, literally incorporate magic. But one thing that I have noticed is undeniable about cardinal signs and people with pure cardinal signs, it's, it's the, it's the uh, quality of psychic ability. And it's like the more cardinal signs you have, the more psychic you are. So well, I think that's a, my Lilith is you have that. my Lilith is in Pisces, and so is um, my my Neptune is in Sagittarius. Mm. So that I, must I, be what I'm feeling too. Yeah, I have a lot of um, water, air, earth, and fire in my chart. You can pull my chart up if you want to. Yeah, Look, let's do that. Let me pull it up real quick. I'm gonna flip my my main light on if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna pull up your chart. So, um, if you can still hear me, when and please don't mind the tab, guys. When what is your birthday? Um, April second, nineteen seventy five. And it's sprinkled spelled uh, S P R A N K L E. Nope, it's S P R E N K E L. E N K E L. Oh, Sprint Cal. Awesome. Um, and what time were you born? Um, eight oh eight PM. 
No way. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and where were you born? Um, Sunbury, Pennsylvania. The town that I live in right now. Spirit called me back here. Okay. Spirit and everything Sunbury. fell apart. <laughs> Sunbeam or Sunbury? Sunbury. It's S U N B U R Y. Oh, oh, Sunbury. Okay. Yeah, wow, that's amazing. That's a lot of cardinal energy. Oh, and so Saturn would, of course, be in your ninth, tenth. That's wow. Oh, okay, so I'm glad we did this because you have an exact square with your sun and Saturn, mm -hmm. which is gnarly. It's hard energy. Wow, I see. Oh, okay, now I know even more so why I have that feeling with you. We both have Venus and Taurus. Yeah. So that definitely, uh, that's, that's awesome. That's really awesome. Um, <laughs> you got Chiron on your son, so I'm you're definitely Chiron healing return. Uranus. Yeah, you, you have a Uran, Uranus opposition, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you also have Pluto as a Pluto square, your your moon, and then Saturn square, your sun. Jesus Christ, that's intense. Amen. <laughs> um, yeah. I've had a hard life, peace dealer. I can't even I get bet. into a relationship right now. It's like been impossible. And I want to talk about that because, um, oh man, there's so much about this chart I want to go <laughs> into. But before, yeah. I'm, I'm totally, yeah, I could, you can see it. I want to talk about that because like Pluto opposite sun is something I want to do a documentary on because that brings hatred to it. Like it's easy for people to hate oh, you yeah. if they have, if you have Pluto, it's like you can see directly the evil parts of people, especially in the 12th. It's like, you can see people's dark sides. You can see the subtle manipulation that they may employ and you'll feel it with your cat moon. But like, if you're a Taurus, born with Pluto and Scorpio opposite your son, if you're a Gemini born with Pluto and Sag opposite your son, if you're a Pisces with Pluto Virgo, you are going to, this is the shade aspect. Like you are going to get shade from people. And let's take Chris Brown, for example. Obviously he's, he's it, it, it's not really just one-sided, but a lot of this man's stigma is because he's Pluto opposite son. Like it just draws this negative energy towards y'all. And it's crazy to see that you also have Saturn opposite your moon. So it looks like you're really here to deal front and center with this difficulty. No wonder this, this simultaneously makes you super psychic. And it's like, you can feel and see into the depths of a person's character, which is amazing. Yeah, and you have no idea how much I've been gaslighted from people just, oh. I it's been like I had to legit go into turtle mode a lot of times just to go back into my own soul and check me to make sure I wasn't going crazy. Which once again is just like wow. That, so, yeah, I have a grand dealing with cross. It's it's a rough life. <laughs> It's a rough, it is a rough life. It's actually one of the most, you have one of the most difficult aspects in astrology. And I don't, I don't mean as far as like, generally, I mean, as far as like every single chart that I've read in my life, which has been a little bit over like a, a few thousand, this is probably one of the most difficult charts I've ever seen. But with that cat moon, it does literally make you super powerful, especially through this pain. I'm familiar with a uh, Saturn on the moon, but Saturn opposite moon must be not easy. I mean, having, I, I, I would suggest Saturn in Cancer is very much so, you know, a lot of, a lot of authority over emotions, but not allowing yourself to feel really. But I mean, what are the odds that you would have an exact squares between these? And you have yeah. Jupiter and Aries. So yeah. you really do have like a final cross buffer. Wow. <laughs> That's wild. That's really wild. I mean, <laughs> I'm telling you, so many people had fallen away from my life in the last two years. Um, I've really drawn a lot of hatred in pretty in church. I've drawn a lot, yeah, and people from church. I've drawn a lot of hatred from people that I worked with. Um, 
people who were supposed to be my friends just it was, it's been bad yeah. but i had to learn to forgive and um let it go that has been my biggest thing is cutting off cords and let well cutting out cords and letting it go um yeah and making sure my motives are that of purity and um integrity saturn's huge on integrity <laughs> Super huge, I agree. And I mean, if anything, I guess I would say like a lot of how much of this energy that you personally have um, interacts with the 12th, I totally could relate with the gaslighting. Um, actually, no, I don't want to say that. I feel like for you, it's on a whole deeper level. It's like, the opposition lets you see it happening, but they can hide in the 12th house. So it just makes you look crazy, even yep. though. And wow. I've had so much of that, but I'm, you wanna know what, all those people? Um, yeah, I, I look for healing for them. They need wow. healing. True that. Ace of Cups, look at that. Oh, I missed that one. That was after the star? <laughs> yep, star and the Ace of Cups. Wow. That's awesome. Um, so what inspired you to name your channel Blue Flame Integration, which is really awesome, by the way. Spirit, because I didn't know what to name my channel. Spirit told me to start a YouTube channel. There was people on YouTube who needed me. And I was like, what? Um, yeah. It was a complete leap of faith. I nice. that wasn't something that I really technically aspired to ever really do. Um, like I said, That's I have great. degrees. I'm not. I'm pretty smart, actually. <laughs> um, I have a sociology a bachelor's degree and um, a criminal justice associate. So for me to be doing this instead of actually something th third dimensional. <laughs> yeah. I Which is I'm so story. glad. I'm so glad you brought up as well because, you know, it's um, it's very easy for people who aren't in this. It's very easy for people to to kind of act like people in this field don't have the educational background, or maybe they're just doing it because they don't have the opportunity. So, I'm always in fascination to see people who uh like you who once again you know you you have you you have the accolades you have you have the degrees you have and yet you were called here and it's working out for you i, I don't know. think well there is was this, a blockage. Is this how there was a blockage for the longest time peace dealer um i've had like i said it was hard for, to grow my channel i didn't realize like doing the lives and stuff um, you didn't get the mm -hmm. views like you would if you had put out videos. And finally, that kind of clicked. Spirit shut off my live because I didn't have a thousand subs. I got my thousand subs on Easter at 12 15 at night. Easter morning, mm -hmm. I got my thousand subs to get my live stream back. Nice. So when I tell oh, you, I got you. So when I tell you that this is sense. supernatural, this is completely supernatural. Totally agree. Perseverance, to that Aries in me and that my Mars and Aquarius just makes me push through. Yeah. yeah. And now you have a uh, 2.6 thousand, congrats. Yes. I like that you said, um, I like that you noticed the distinction between um, the live videos and the pre-recorded videos. Cause I didn't realize that either, but that makes yep. a whole lot of sense. Um, yeah, they didn't get near the amount of views. Yeah, no, that, interesting. And I mean, yeah, and it definitely does just bring out more content. Um, and and I, I, the last thing I, I forgot to mention is uh, you have Mercury in Pisces, 27 degrees, yep. mm -hmm. which is really awesome. Does that give you like a rich dream life? Do you have a lot of like, Vivid I have dreams nightmares. I, I I dream all the time, and lately I've been having the, the weirdest nightmares. You dream all the time. See, every That's night me. I dream. And you can remember your dreams, and it's full color HD, all that. Yep. 
That is so amazing. I, I realize it's good. <laughs> I wake up exhausted all the time. I'm like, I feel like I didn't even sleep. Damn. So they're lucid, like you you can control what happens in them? I wish I could. No, I couldn't. I, no. I still can't quite get to that. I've been asking spirit for that. Help me control my dream. <laughs> I mean, even my tattoos that I have on my body all pointed to um, me pulling cards. I kid you not. <laughs> like, I have the king of, uh, or the queen of um, hearts and the queen of diamonds on my arm. And I got this tattoo, like, six or seven years ago. The king of hearts and the queen of diamonds. No, no, the queen, the queen, and, the queen of hearts and the queen of diamonds. The Queen of Hearts and the Queen of Diamonds. There we go. Yes. Wow. That's amazing. I, I, I also love the how you can relay the divination in playing cards too, mm -hmm. which is uh, pretty profound. So, I mean, yeah, we definitely, that's, the, I, I uh, when I named the Peace Dealer, it came from spirit too. Um, I don't remember really outright thinking, oh, okay, let me, like it just kind of came to me, Aquarius season. Uh, and it wasn't until later I looked up the um, numerology and it was just like 999. So I totally get you on that spirit led thing. And, and, and that's really amazing too, because giving your story, it directly contradicts the lies that are told by religious people who, want to project that narrative that tarot cards are evil and that you know they they always bring stories of people with tarot cards who used to read it and now they're christian um if that's the case then spirit wouldn't call people to it in the first place yo i'm so, telling you i you know, and I love Jesus. I say this all the time. I have Jesus on my tarot table. He watches me. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. I absolutely adore Jesus, like his life and um, how he lived, um, how he treated women. Uh, mm -hmm. Wasn't any different uh, than how he, well, he was actually very lovely to women, but um, unlike church people, there's a difference. Exactly. Uh, you know, like, different. And and the lack of intellect is appalling. The pe people who quote Bible scripture without knowing the context, they like like saying that divination is bad when that comes from an ancient lineage of priests that are do not live in the same time zone as we do. Like you don't know what they meant by that. They divine. You know what I mean? This is something you have to be anointed and called into. So the distinction between tarot cards and religion is literally like trying to distinct cutlery and sandwiches. So when you say that taro is evil and doesn't mix with Christianity, that's like saying, oh, you can't use knives to make peanut butter. Like they go I, hand in hand. Like I, I won't even- It's gonna use, enhance your- I won't even right. use the term Christian. I'm not a, I'm, I love Jesus. That is it. Um, Amen. I love, I love Amen. spirit. I love God. I love Jesus. Anything else? I mean, yeah, there's some really good scripture. I, but I look at it as God talking to me. I don't look at scripture yeah, as yeah. me judging somebody else's life. That's not my yeah. job. I feel you are. That's, that's probably that's my so, labor rising there. I would say it's also the Aries and Jupiter too. Uh, Jupiter contacts make one super spiritual and not in the conventional ways that we think they've looked like. So, and that's what I appreciate about Aries energy in general. It's just, it's original, it's raw. It's not trying to fit a norm that it I doesn't have to. Hide. Go on my channel, and I have that, So that's really, that's really what's up. And so um, could you speak more on like, the journey that it's taken you to, to get to here? You said that spirit inspired you know, blue flame and you weren't necessarily even, and that's that's just like classic. That That's always how it happens. Spirit always calls people and then they're like, no, this isn't right. And then it's like, it comes through again. So yeah, well, how's the journey? Um, 
Hang on, let me grab a drink quick. I need a drink for this. And one. also, I have an extra question. Why did you choose those cards to have tattooed? Um, this is kind of weird. My ex-boyfriend mm. has the, the suit of kings. I had a Sagittarius ex-boyfriend who had the suit of kings. So I, I, okay. I ended up getting the suit of queens, which is... Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, but um, yeah, that way, like, I kind of knew we probably wouldn't be together. But I did like his tattoo and the way that it was set up. And I was like, I really want the queen. Was he a fixed sign? No, he was a Sagittarius. He was a Sag. Okay, interesting. Interesting. He was a whore. I would... he was a whore. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I can't even be surprised. Um, yeah, I'm not even surprised. Sagittarius men. I haven't met any Sag men in my whole life. Um, who isn't really like a man ho. Um, save save uh, Ryan Sage. Shout out to Ryan Sage. That seems like a very awakened Sag. Um, and I don't even say that uh, with shame because I'm a Gemini too. I, I got those tendencies. I'm but, married, uh, so I have that like masculine and then I have a lot of Venus there. So I have the feminine with the Libra and the Venus and Taurus. So I mean, and then I have Saturn just like wanting to kill me half the time because I'm not taking action because I'm, you know, I want to. And then I have the the whole back and forth balancing act that I have to work with Libra with my rising sign. It's like, I don't want to do anything wrong, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, lots Saturn of pressure. Is just like get off your ass and do something. <laughs> and cancer nonetheless, too. That's interesting. Uh, um, But yeah, once again, like, Sagittarius, if you're if any Sagittariuses are watching here, you are the only zodiac sign that is allowed to be a whore. So don't let I mean fire signs, y'all know what it is, but Sag, like don't let people demonize you. You know what I'm saying? I'm being a Gemini yeah. here. But uh I think I really I mean I your love father is Zeus. I do. I, we really all connect, I connect well with all the upper echelon signs. Um, those are my, That's the majority, awesome. the majority of my subs are Sagittarius, um, Aquarius and Pisces. That's beautiful. Um, and some That's Libra. Beautiful. I have a few, Air you'd think I'd have more Aries, but no. Interesting. And, and yeah, that's what I was going to say too. I, I think it's amazing because it, in the tarot, um, all the cardinal signs are the Queens. Aries is the queen of wands. Libra is the queen of swords. Capricorn is the queen of pentacles and Cancer is the queen of cups. So you, you having that cross in your chart and then like the suit of queens is so symbolic. Like you, it's amazing. I did not start, I did not touch tarot. The first year when I heard spirit tell me to get, I got the gilded tarot deck and I heard spirit tell me to sleep with those cards. Mm. I slept with my tarot cards for a good six, seven months. They went wow. everywhere. I, I wanted to make sure it was my um, anointing that was one of those cards. Spirit told me to sleep with those cards. And I'm like, well, okay then. It, and it's, it sounds completely off the wall and radical and crazy, but I just went off blind faith. And I, that that was the deck I got. I will not get anything that says witch on it. Um, I kind of stay away from that term. Um, yeah. But... Uh, Speaking of the Queen of Wands, there she is. Who did I who did I uh interview recently? Um uh I forgot uh I forgot who I interviewed, but I spoke to somebody who um witchcraft was ingrained in their ancestry. So they didn't choose the witch life, it was their lineage. And mm, those are yeah. really the only those are really the only people who are witches. Like maybe you might have found that in a past life, you were one and maybe your family rejected the I was lineage. So the I don't- stake. I was burned at the stake in a past life. That's a definite. That's wild. I can believe that. I yep. think that's with Neptune and uh, Sagittarius is it, it uh, might be an indicator. But yeah, I, I definitely don't want to like, I noticed that, that it's a way for, for people to find like empowerment and identification and and uh, for men and wizards too. And, and there's just more ways, like 
don't limit for anyone watching who is looking for an identity don't limit yourself to just being a witch because there's more darker undertones with that than you may know this this new age has glorified aspects of this and you know no disrespect to witchcraft it's just it's just really disrespectful to real practicing witches who yeah. Are, are in their lane. It's not like they just decided, oh, I'm going to be a witch. You know what I mean? So, yep. you know, I'm not going to tell anyone how to live their spiritual path, but just keep that in mind. You know, there's so much, you're so much greater than than that. I'll say Absolutely. that. Yeah. 1,000%. So. Just follow what your gut is telling you to do. Um, listen to your instincts. You're never, that's, that's the best advice I probably can give to people is just be whatever faith, you know, it was radical obedience and faith. Yeah. Um, if you want to hear my story of what happened, um, how please, I came please. into this, I can, please I do. Sort of to told you a little bit. Um, well, uh, I grew up in a fundamental Baptist church. Um, very like you had to wear the awful culottes and the nasty clothing <laughs> can't wait to burn that shit. and then um i ended up uh going off the path and then coming back mm -hmm. on the path um got not really religious but i really just wanted to know and um understand god i wanted to understand the truth and that's what i was seeking was truth it wasn't um that I was seeking um, a way out of my sin. I wanted to know who God was. I wanted to understand spiritual things. And um, there was just that yearning in me to, and I, like I said, you know, the only thing that we know here usually in America is biblical stuff. So I dug into the Bible and um, I actually believed it, you know, um, not necessarily the condemnation part, but the love part. And, um, got into uh i ended up start we ended up in a really religious church that was dead ended up going to a different church that was kind of a newer church and it was yeah. more of a charismatic church and that's when i actually got filled with the spirit holy spirit started speaking in tongues oh and no then, way oh yeah i got light language so nice and then um with that, like my relationship with spirit just blossomed into um, a beautiful love story, I can say. <laughs> and, and this um, was in a Baptist church, you said? I started out in a Baptist church. No, that was in a charismatic church. A charismatic church. Yeah, that it was acceptable to speak in tongues and um, it yeah. was more spirit led than a Baptist church. <laughs> and then um, I ended up going to a conference. Uh, down in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, at a church down there, a friend of mine who went to the church I went to um, was telling me about this conference that she was gonna go to and she asked if I wanted to go, I'm like, oh heck yeah. I ended up getting nailed to the floor by spirit. Nailed to the floor, legit, like I was, it felt like fire pulsating through my body uh, is the best way I can describe it. And walking out of that place, I was like giggly and they, they call it like drunk in the spirit. It was like a full Pentecost moment for me. And like, then, <laughs> yes. Like I legit wow. got infused with, um, and just the, the knowledge and understanding. And then, um, I noticed as I, I started pissing people off in my own church because I walked by people and they'd start falling out in the spirit. So that's very real. I had wait, 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 wait. Oh yeah. So like you were like a conduit. It's like you would walk to people and just give them your Jupiter flame and just like, because yeah. I noticed you have Uranus in the first too. So it's like you, you're yeah. awakening people basically. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And yeah, I was cool. able to actually um, transfer my anointing onto other people. Wow. Ended up, in, ended up on a missions trip in Brazil for healing and, um, uh, for you know, for divine healing, laying hands on the sick, I actually believed that what Jesus did worked. You know, he went around healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils, and you know, 
Yeah, that's what he did. Feeding and people. For reference, you do have Jupiter and Chiron in the same sign of your sun. And then it's opposite Pluto of awakening. So I didn't even realize until you just said this, like you do, no wonder you have that difficulty. You do like activate and awaken people um, and heal people miraculously. So I'm pretty sure that's what people can expect when uh, they get readings with you or just do any type of work with that's That's really profound, especially because that used to be some of the, the most painful uh, parts of going to church for me. Like I never, I, I've, all, I've been so obsessed. Like it, I, there's a slight obsession that I have with, oh, superpower awakening, you're gonna awaken your superpowers. And I, and I always talk about, you know, powers, but back when I was a Christian, it was the same then. Like I was just fascinated with getting born again and, and speaking in tongues and like getting anointed with spirit. And I feel like that was something I never really received of course, later I realized that I guess it just didn't, it, it, it just didn't uh, happen to me the way I expected to happen. But it's just, it's just so like, I remember, you know, going to the, the, the places where it's like, raise your hand for anointing or like, you see people kind of like fall on the ground and like catch and I always felt left out like, oh, it's, so maybe because I was too earth and air and I was all in my head about it, like, oh, it's not happening the way I think it should. So for you to, um, my father is an Aries, a Virgo moon Aries to this day. He's skeptical about like certain aspects of religion. But when I am but, too, I am too. <laughs> but at some point in his life, he caught the spirit and he started speaking in tongues as well. So if someone like him can, like that's that's a man, I feel like that's an attribute of fire. I really feel like fire signs are the spirit. So I, I think that's amazing that you can share that with us. Um, well, wow. um, when I started really getting, um, the, the psychic into impressions and stuff, uh, actually was in Brazil. Um, I mean, I would get some stuff and I get scripture, I'd take to church, whatever, but no, when I actually started getting like real mm -hmm. words of knowledge, um, mm -hmm. for people who were sick and starting to be able to feel other people's pain around me. Um, legit, it happened to me when I was in Brazil on this missions trip and it was all for divine healing and stuff. Um, and it was through a group called Global Awakening. <laughs> wow. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, studied under Heidi Baker and um, yeah, so like, I don't know what they would be thinking about this, but I really don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm doing what God tells me to do. Whether anybody and I, likes it. And that's what I tell my parents. I'd rather ask God for forgiveness than man for, for permission. But I mean, it's, it's, it's so amazing. God truly works in mysterious ways. Because if you examine Old Testament and New Testament stories in the Bible, Almost every time God calls someone to do something, it's 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 not only weird, the person not only kind of doesn't know how to understand it, but it, it almost makes them enemies with the presiding, you know, Pharisees or the Sadducees yeah. or people who enforce religion. They're like, God wouldn't tell you to do that. And the person's like, I that's what I thought too. I'm just doing what God told me to do though. So you know what? Like, it's, it's, I mean, how, how rational is it for, you know, I actually did um, a video back, it was right before Easter, it was called um, Savage Jesus. Um, and it had to do with, you know, the things that we wouldn't consider being love loving, but Jesus would call out his um, disciples all the time for not having faith. All the time. He was constantly on them. You don't have faith. You don't trust. Um, he was calling Judas out for his bullshit. Um, Peter all the time, he was bitching at Peter for not having faith. And Peter was one of the biggest, you know, we all know what happened to Judas. He ended up killing him. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, Peter ended up being one of the biggest, I think Peter was an Aries, uh, Peter was probably an Aries, open mouth insert book guy. 
the one thing that sticks out to me with Peter. Oh crap. Yeah, the one thing that speaks out to me with Peter is more so the facet of him um wanting to when the transfiguration happened with Jesus and he there was Moses and Elijah, Peter represented the aspect of us that's like, oh, we need to we need to bring out our phones and record this. We need to document this. And Jesus just put him to sleep, like, go to sleep, Peter. Like, chill. Like, yeah. You know, you know, we don't need to record this right now. Well, so I, was I, like, wanted, yeah, I, I wanted to talk to you about um, Saul and Paul, the conversion okay. there on the road to Damascus. Yeah. Think about that. One day that guy was out killing, you know, the- the uh, passion. Yes, he hated Christians. Passion. And next thing you know, he saw a oh. white light flash before him. He got knocked off his horse and down he went. Next thing you know, he hears the, the voice of spirit tell him to go to, I forget the name of the guy, cause it's like a long name, but this dude's house and, the scales fell off his eyes and he actually understood then. And he became the biggest testimony and wrote three quarters of the New Testament. Yep. It's 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 fascinating. And I feel I feel a lot like Paul because um the opposite happened to me. Like I was Christian and then God was like, no, 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 you gotta go <laughs> this way. Like, so I I I love the story of Paul. Um <laughs> The, and, and that's why I'm so grateful that I have my Christian upbringing mm -hmm. because like it definitely helps me appreciate that a lot of people approach in, in this new age or, or, or community approach the Bible with, with such disdain. They're like, oh, screw the Bible. They'll they'll pick up the, it'll trigger beliefs they have. They'll pick up the worst parts. The Bible is a beautiful book. The Bible has like a lot of, it, it's the interpretation of the Bible that it's questionable, but as yeah. a book on its own standpoint, I think it's amazing. And you know, it's, it's, all it's about interesting the love of God. being silent. It's all it's about, all about, it's about the love of God. It's, and look, um, when it comes to Old Testament stuff, I do love some of the stories like about the prophet um, Elisha and I like Moses, he was cool. But when it comes to Jesus, man, that was a whole different ball game, man. Who would go around? Nobody went around healing the sick. You know, that's one of my callings is to help people heal body, mind, and spirit. That's my calling and part of my purpose. And he did say that, you know, we would be able to do greater than he did. And the disciples were healing people with their shadow. Mm -hmm. Imagine being Silas, being told, hey, you know that dude that was out there killing Christians? Well, he's one of us now, so we need you to bring him back and, and cure him of his blindness. So I was like, what? Whoa, hold on. Like, I don't want him to kill me. You guys like, oh, yeah. Imagine his, his, I would have been like, I don't freaking think so. Right? <laughs> oh, my God. Like how in the heck did that happen? So can you can have to imagine, you know, the faith that it even took even back then for, I mean, the guys who walked with Jesus didn't have faith. You know, yeah, yeah. us who didn't even get to walk with him, I think we have more faith now than what they did. Um, the guys who walked with him and denied him and just, like I said, uh, the song, I'll go back and I'll talk about the Song of Solomon. Um, that is probably one of the most beautiful books of the Bible. Um, True. And it really talks about the divine masculine and feminine. And it talks about um, God's love for the church. Like that's the way um, relationships really should look. Um, which is part of the reason I'm divorced from a religious guy. The church is the reason I'm divorced. Is that crazy? It makes, I mean, it's crazy, but it makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's wow. What what sign was your ex-husband? He was a Capricorn. Ah, so you married your moon. Okay, and I didn't understand your... any of this back then. You married your son. Interesting. What Do you know what his moon sign was? I have no clue. I don't know. Oh. I never really looked up his chart. I don't care to. I feel you. 
<laughs> it's whatever. I never. I, that's whatever. Um. Now my kids are all into astrology as well. Um. I have a. It's. I have a Scorpio son. I have um. A Capricorn son, and then I have an Aquarius daughter. So, I mean, and she's a double. She's a Gemini rising and moon. A double gem and moon. The, the Capricorn? No, the Aquarius. The Aquarius, nice. Yeah. She, yeah, her and I, and she has her Mars and Aries, so like she's kind of really unpredictable. You never know what you're going to get with that girl. But yeah, she already yeah. has her own set of tarot cards. She's been doing this for as long as I have. She asked for her own set, and her she has them out at her dad's house, the religious guy. Yeah. And yeah. Like he doesn't believe in any of this stuff. Which is crazy. <laughs> like skeptical Capricorns really fascinate me because they're they're still undeniably so psychic. So they must live in either incredible denial or they're hiding something. And Capricorn would hide that side to them. Oh, or yeah. just kind of deem. So that's that's really interesting. Well, it, um, like I, my we have a me and him have a Capricorn son together. So, um, and then yeah. like, he's he's a double cap with um, I think his rising is in Pisces. So he's completely fascinated with what I do. Oh, nice! That's really so he's awesome. a part of the Cat Moon Club too. Your son, your Capricorn son? Yeah. He's a cat moon too? Uh-huh. Yep. Oh, wow. So I have a child in every element. Well, between me, I'm the fire sign. My my oldest son is a Scorpio, so there's your water. And then I have uh, the Capricorn in Earth. And then I have Olivia, and she's an air sign. So I, between me and my kids, we make up all the elements. That's beautiful. <laughs> it's pretty cool. That's really awesome. Wow. So that's interesting to know now that as a, a Libra rising, Jupiter is coming into your fourth to kind of wrap up all this family um, karma and with the South Node. So that, that'll be really interesting to see. In fact, it looks like your career is getting ready to, to like establish itself now too. Uh, with this eclipse, so that'll be interesting to see how that plays out accordingly as well. Um, I'm definitely going to invite you back on here so we can just talk spirituality and and possibly uh, do live readings. I'm going to do special live segments where we just do exclusively live readings, okay. and I really love to invite you on for that. Absolutely, um, I would love to. I guess in that vein, let us. Um, let us actually pull some cards. I see you got your cards out, so let's pull. I've some had cards. these cards in my hand. <laughs> yeah, I'm a terrible shuffler, though. I'm like the Leo King. I don't shuffle well. Do the cards just fly out when you? Yep, they do, usually. <laughs> or so. Um, oh, there's yeah. the heart. All right, that'll be the general card for everybody. Yep. And. Um, all right, so we can go down the Zodiac. We'll start with Aries, of course. Okay. You don't know your human design, do you? What's that? Your human design? What? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Okay, um, I'm gonna pull it up. It, it's, a, it's a different modality of spirituality and um, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna check it out real quick. Okay. See what, your human design is. I, I know what my numerology, like my life path number is a 10, which goes back to one. Oh, nice, one life. So your your tarot birth cards are the magician and the sun, I believe. All right, there's Aries. You have the eight of wands. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, nice. Any, any interpretation for us? Be expecting a lot of communication or to be communicating with people um, coming up here in the next, I'd say the next few weeks. 
there's somebody who hasn't been communicating right. with you um, karmically, expect spirit to be communicating with you as well, Aries. Open up, that, open up that heart chakra. And Aries, I got the magician. So the Eight of Wands and a Magician, uh, looks like there's an amazing opportunity that's gonna come together quite quickly and magically. Oh yeah. So that's awesome. Be expecting that um, communication coming in, Aries. Ooh. Okay, I had two flip out for Taurus. Interesting, it's the Princess of Pentacles. The Princess, that's, that's the Princess is like the page, right? Yep, the Page of Pentacles, and the, the Ace of Cups. Oh, snap. Okay, Taurus. What I want to tell you so, guys, I love, that, the that, I love the interpretation of this Ace of Cups because it yeah, actually, yeah. it shows the dove up there, which I have a pet dove that lives on my house, which is the interpretation of spirit. So be expecting um, an overflow of um, mm. insight and intuitive gifting and that's coming in definitely with this offer of um stability possibly a new job just being handed to you and that shocks me with uranus there Ooh. and um we do see that your human design is actually a manifesting generator so um if you're ever able to get into human design, it's not the easiest to get into right now. There's not like the most accessible info, but um, that's really dope. So just- I don't know what that mind. is. <laughs> yeah, my bad, like I, it's really hard to explain it, but if anyone ever asks you what your human design is, tell them you are a manifesting generator. <laughs> that's all I can say for now. Okay. So, Taurus, um, we have the lover's card for you. So it looks like this might be some, with that Ace of Cups, some new romance too. And, and, and uh, the Page of Pentacles coming in. Yeah. The, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure that princess might not only be money, but that could actually be like this lover, someone who's uh, quite grounded. <laughs> Someone who's quite grounded and, uh, you know, disciplined, dedicated. I had two cards out for Gemini as well. I I was I just shuffle and, and meditate. Here comes Gemini. You have the Seven of Pentacles, along with the Empress. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's looking at all of those. Um, areas in your life that you know you kind of really need to get grounded on um and i know as a gemini like you kind of go back and forth in your mind about um with the grounding especially with the empress here but looking at all those areas in your life that maybe um aren't quite concrete yet they're getting there but with the empress then yeah that's divine feminine all the way so is that more like a promise, Just like stay focused? Oh yeah. Um, as you see, this fella is like watching. He's watching on those cards. He's looking at those pentacles and he's working. And he's pretty dope. So the Empress, <laughs> the Empress is like the, the actual harvest that's gonna oh, yeah. come from that. Mm -hmm. From work, uh, working on those things. Look for that empress, or you oh, are one. <laughs> or you are one, that's true. Yep. Could indicate maybe waiting for pregnancy too, right? Mm -hmm. Conceiving oh, with yeah. a child. Yeah, yeah, look for conception as well. If you're trying to get pregnant, now's a good time. Aha, uh -huh. <laughs> so I got the, uh, the king of wands, which, um, I would say just kind of extends this forth more so passionately, maybe, especially when it constitutes a sense of entrepreneurialism and 
It's interesting because I'm a Gemini and the King of Wands is red and I'm wearing a red shirt. So it's definitely <laughs> like, you know, stepping into your passions and, and, and using your mind to help you rule your heart. If you need to connect with the Leo uh, to see what that looks like, do so. Yes. Sure. Um, and it's kind of interesting because of your connection, you know, with all the Leos that you're connected with. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. You know, and like I said, with the Hierophant being over this whole, everybody's whole um, readings for these many little things that I'm, we're doing here, that's awesome. Your intuition is going to be spot mm -hmm. on. So whatever mm -hmm. your gut is telling you, trust it. Interesting to know. Wow. All right, Not Cancer. The easiest Time for Cancer. Going on with my emotional cancers. We're soon head. Oh, happy birthday, Cancer! We're heading into your season. There's the Ace of Wands for you. Oh, wow. nice! Oh, yep. I love that card. It's oh, this card's a... freaking dope! Look at that. It's like coming out of the water. Wow. These cards are awesome. It's the Illuminati deck, but yeah. Be looking for yeah. that passion coming in. Um, fresh new fire star starter. That's what this means. Um, Mars is just about to leave your sign, so he's leaving you a gift. And what we got for you <laughs> is the justice card. So. Oh. Justice in this case for me, right? With the Ace of Wands, it could be more so if anyone has wronged you, um, it, there's balance here, but it's almost like the Ace of Wands is a trigger and like a new experience will help balance stuff out of your life, but also more so uh, an important trigger will literally like expose anyone who's been unfair to you. And it's like, you now have an onus to gain justice back on your side. Yeah, that's and I, I love this because of the way that that's coming out of the water. It's like, here I am. Like I specifically feel like some cancers that have been gaslighted or wrongly accused or they're not getting justice and this is gonna switch it like. Yep. Out the line. Absolutely. Um, they, they've had, with the North Node being there as well, yeah. Oh my. Fresh new start. Ah, Leo, you got the nine of cups. You got some wishes coming in here. I don't know what you guys have all been wishing for, but son of a gun. Yeah, he's all proud about that. No. All right, Leo. I want to take, can I, I want to pull another card for them. One more card for my Leos, please, spirit. That one, come out. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then you got the two of pentacles. You got a decision to make. Those wishes that you've made last night, make sure they're balanced. Mm -hmm. From the ceremony that you have done, Peace Dealer, yeah, there's two boats out there. You know, make sure that they're balanced. And um, uh, your wishes, you're going to get what you asked for. Period. Leos get what they want. They don't usually have to um, try really hard, but just make sure that they're balanced. And look, you have the infinity symbol right here, which is a sign of Leo with this two of pentacles. Make sure it's balanced. All right. So we have the Page of Swords and the King of Wands, which is Leos are, some of you Leos are lurking. <laughs> I ain't kind of like spying and looking at some people, social media creeping. Uh, I mean, I'm all about that too. I was joking. Uh, this is more so, but it's not really all bad like that. I Some of this is strategic. I get the sense that you like, you're, you're coming into a newer truth. You're coming into new information. You're gonna use this new information to really like augment what creative ventures you're already doing. 
but that page of swords might not even be you. In fact, I feel like the king is on his throne and the page of swords could be a Gemini or some kind of spy that you have gaining information for you. So you're about to get the tea dished. Oh okay? yeah. Yep. <laughs> and like I said, this when you, when you look at this card, there the infinity symbol goes right back and forth. Which <laughs> is a card for Leo. Even though it's a pentacle card, I see stuff like that all the time in cards and All right. I guess we'll move along to Virgo. I love Virgo. Not really, but um <laughs> <laughs> no offense to Virgos, as long as they're not speaking out curses. They're so powerful. My mom's a Virgo. Mm -hmm. I so like I have I have a, a, a passionate love for Virgos. Um, but with them being fixed or they're not them being mutable, that a lot of times they're so third dimensional that it's hard for them to get out of their head. Oh my. Plus they're like Scorpio. They'll act super, more. They'll act more powerful. free, and they they won't show you their power like that. They'll hide it and so you. They could be very tricky. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, I had a few cards come out here for Virgo, which is the Two of Wands. Um. Nice. Yeah. Th this is making that decision to press forward, Virgo, with the Queen of Pentacles. Go figure. You know, making that decision. Um. But if you have two decisions to make, look at your, I've been talking about balance with Virgo for so long on YouTube. Um, make sure that you're balanced out between you and Pisces, somewhere in a nice middle, that you're not too far delusional, but um, allow your spiritual side to come forth. Allow that imagination to begin to take place and happen. I mean, we need Virgo to be anchored into the 3D, so, or we would all be a mess. So we got for you, Virgo, the Emperor card. So on top of that, it's here to enforce greater stability, especially with Jupiter in your fourth, which could be shaking that up. But y'all are about to be even more powerful. I don't know if we're ready for super powerful Virgo. Like the only thing holding Virgo back was like that super powerful foundation. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we're ready for, for Emperor Virgos. <laughs> I'm like, telling they you got... when Virgo figures out their imagination and they, when Virgos get in line, it's all over for dark forces from there. When they figure out the power oh, okay. of manifestation, it's all over for dark forces. If they can just get out of their head. And 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 they already they already know the magic of manifestation. Mm -hmm. So you're right. Once they integrate the power, it is a wrap. It's over. I yep. totally agree. That's that's amazing. <laughs> Ooh, okay, Libra. Here we go, Libra. What are you holding back, one Libra? Come on, four pentacles. Mm -hmm. I, I look at this fella in this deck of cards as kind of being closed off in his, the way he thinks and it's over the same his, Capricorn. Yes. And over his heart chakra. Libra, mm -hmm. if you've been hurt, I understand where you're coming from. However, um, try and be a little bit more open um, with your heart and um, bring some balance there. Um, with the Four of Pentacles, Fours aren't usually bad card. Uh, you have Four of Wands and all that other stuff. Um, I'm going to pull one more for them, too. Here, give me one more card for Libra, please, for the collective here. Ooh, oh, thank you. Oh, the Hermit. Okay. I knew you guys were closed off a little bit. Are you guys in Hermit mode? Hmm? Yeah, start looking into your intuition. What is your intuition telling you guys? You want to know what? Your your full moon was super powerful. And I think you guys are figuring out what your power really is now. 
So don't Ooh, hold that back. Makes so much don't hold back. So let's see what we got. So we got for you, Libra. Um, the hanged man. Maybe they're holding back because they have to surrender. And um, the hangman speaks of prophetic power. Okay. So it's 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 the card of like Odin sacrificing himself to his higher God self so that he can become, you know, it's like he's sacrificing his mortal self to his infinite self. So um, the vibe I'm getting from this is since that you are the second most powerful cardinal sign in the Zodiac, and there's so much you know you can do, and you do a little bit too much, which you may not ever admit, the hangman is saying to kind of fall back. And you're going to be in situations where you can do it and it's going to work, but you probably shouldn't, and you should just kind of let things play out. That, probably, that, kind makes, of that makes a lot of sense with the hermit card coming out there, too. There's Spirit shine in that light. Um, it's gonna show you where you are holding back and where you need to bring the balance there. Yep. You are justice, you are in our courtrooms. Um, your sign is right in our courtrooms, Libra. And I've been saying this too, when Libra starts opening up their mouth, <laughs> we're gonna start seeing justice. Fair and balanced justice. Which is crazy because a lot of Libras are already vocal, but I've noticed that they've reached a stage in their careers where they're they're working directly with the higher ups. So they know that if they say certain things, it could threaten people who they're family with or they're close to. So it's like Libras are like, well, I don't want my family to get targeted by these dark forces. So what do I do? Do I do I take the risk and be the revolutionary or do I succumb to the pressure of the establishment? That's difficult. That has been so, my, with that being a Libra rising, I understand that. Ooh. Oh, she. Scorpio. I love it. All right, you guys have the Six of Swords with the World card and the King of Cups. Whoop, 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 whoop. Yo. <laughs> you guys got, seriously, my Scorpios, please, whatever karmic cycles you guys have to close, allow that to happen and that you can move forward and, and be emotionally available. Um, come into your full kingdom ship, please. Um, I love Scorpio power. And um, yeah, when this cycle closes, you can move forward and do what you need to do. What's best for you? Allow your emotions to come forth. Um, be emotionally, completely emotionally available. Um, I understand as a fixed sign, it's hard for you to do that. Um, and right here, like I said, the wheel, that's all the fixed signs, all the fixed elements right on there. So um, yeah, balance that stuff out. Spirit wants to move you forward. Thank you for that awesome Scorpio full moon too, my goodness. Love you, Scorpio. Yeah, we got the Eight of Pentacles, which is definitely um, shout out to Scorpios as a Gemini sun. Um, <laughs> that's the reason we have to spy on them through uh, social media. That's hilarious. Um, shout out to Scorpios, Gemini's, and Scorpios share Virgo together, so it's really real. But uh, I mean, some of us share Leo, I think. But yeah, it's usually going to be Virgo. But other than that. Um, they're born into a really, really tough sign. My goodness. Yeah, that's like one of the most intense. Yeah. It's embracing, embracing death um, or life. But we do have the Eight of Pentacles. So the message I'm getting is clear and straightforward, just like Virgos um, sometimes. It's literally saying that you want to focus on something that you're working on and that you've, that you've already established is meaningful to you and it's pour on the value just 
pour on the value and just work, work, work so that you can establish that, that, what do I say? Um, oh, not value, but also the consistency, but um, yeah, the value. But what I'm trying to say is like, people will be accustomed to the worth that you have because it's consistent. You're putting your value into it and it's going to pay you back. And if you're looking for work, this is the, this is the period to get it. Creative. Sagittarius, correct? They're next? Yeah. Oh boy. Oh, my Sagittarius. I got one card that came out, but I usually like to have a little bit more of an idea here. Oh, good grief. Nine of Wands and the Wheel. Okay, Sagittarius. You guys um, pissed off at somebody right now, maybe? <laughs> a little mm -hmm. bit defensive? Keeping people behind, um, yeah, a barrier or a wall? Very well could be karmic. Could it be a fixed element on here, maybe? Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius, is that who you're dealing with, maybe? Either way, um, when it comes to you, Sagittarius, um, if there's karmic endings that are happening, allow it to take place. It's the same thing with Scorpio. Allow those karmic, I, I understand this is hard for you. This is hard for everybody. You're mutable. You can handle this. This guy's buff. Look, you can handle this. You guys were built for this shit. Closing these karmic cycles. We just had an awesome moon, full moon in your sign. Closing more karmic cycles. Don't be defensive. Learn to let go. That was the moon in Sag card too. So you pulled the Empress for Gemini and I pulled it right now for Sagittarius. So that's kind of interesting. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, maybe maybe Gemini is being patient on the Sag, but uh, <laughs> the Empress for you, Sag, is talking about abundance and like fully owning your beauty with Venus in your seventh. Like, doesn't matter. I mean, I was gonna say it doesn't matter how ugly you may feel or not beautiful, but every Sag woman I know. Every Sag man I know, they they are far from unconfident. They're on they're on the cram, just showing their bodies off, just like, yeah, I'm sexy. I know it. I'm sexier than you. Like, so I know y'all don't have a confidence issue. Uh, My this is definitely Sagittarius, and she is absolutely beautiful. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah, me and her and I get together. Women. It's usually bad. It's usually what? Really bad. <laughs> I'm trying to keep her out of trouble, and she's like dancing on tables and shit. That that would be Sagittarius. Of course. Oh, uh, all right, Capricorn, you're next. Uh oh. Oh, Ace of Pentacles. Yes. <laughs> my moon, my moon and Cap is like yes. <laughs> so is mine. Yay! It's about time. And I love this because there is a rainbow here. This shit's promised to you, Capricorn. It's a promise. Whatever you ask for, you're getting. Just so you know. Saturn says, let it be. Let it be. And so it is. That's amazing. Okay, so Capricorn, what do we got for you? Ice cold truth. The three of wands, I love this. So it's like the ace of pentacles is starting something new. And then the three of wands is like planning. So this specific combination is like starting a business and then creating like a three year goal, a three month to three year goal that you already start to act off. I love the three of wands, it's sun and Aries, it's enterprising, it's concrete. It's like, it's exciting. It's like your ship's coming in. So it's like, you're gonna, this Ace of Pentacles is gonna now allow you to look forward and be like, nice, we can plan. We have long-term plans that will really uh, open up so much more possibility. Just well, like, if you remember even with your Seven of Pentacles in Gemini and with the Ace of Pentacles here, that 
equals work. That's eight of pentacles for you, peace dealer. Oh, wow. And the Empress and the Three, that's, yeah. that's true. Good to you know, yeah, know work is good. You're not telling anybody about Peace Dealer. How did you know? Damn, I totally do working out a lot on the low. I'm just gonna surprise y'all. <laughs> the woodworks. Sorry, not trying to expose you, Peace Dealer. Even though you did, it's all good. <laughs> There's some things, well, it's all good, we all know this. Most of the people that are in the vibe tribe are, way, are completely psychic, and we all know mm -hmm. what's up. We all know what's up. Oh, I can't hide crap from y'all. <laughs> y'all really do know what's up. It's amazing. Okay, Aquarius, you have the Three of Wands and the King of Swords. Nice, King of Swords is the Aquarius. Yep, that's the card for Aquarius. Um, I, I the, the depiction on this card. I love this. I wasn't sure what deck I was going to use, and I decided to pick out the Illuminati deck for this um, to come on, because I figured you'd ask the pull cards. There's an angel hiding right behind the King of Swords here. You have the backing of the angels with whatever you're doing here, um, Aquarius. Um, your ships are coming in, so whatever you're asking for, know that you have the backing of angelic forces behind you. And interestingly enough, we also have it with the uh, Knight of Cups, which is more so also wanting you. OK, so there's two ways to see this. Like you, you have this objective clarity, but it also wants you to maintain that objectivity while still being artistic, while, while using the fullness of your intellect to apply it in creatively emotional ways. But what I also think, um, what I also think is that the Knight of Cups would be more so like um, an, an other person that you meet who you're gonna be working with. You might manage, maybe you might manage them as an artist because the Knight of Cups is an artist. That's Justin Bieber right there. So Hell it's yeah. like, maybe, maybe the King of Swords is Usher. Usher signed Bieber. So, you know, so it could be something like that. Um, even though the King of Swords is Libra, and, but yeah, Spell Zinc. So, so we all know Mike will be the chief astrologer of Donald Trump in 2020. Yes! I would love to be the president astrologer. If I was psychic, I want to pull cards for him in the White House. If if we could do that, that'll be amazing. Because not only would we do a good job, but that'd be revolutionary if the president was like, yeah, I got an astrologer. I got a tarot card reader. They can't <laughs> <laughs> they, got, they held me down like that. And, and so I, I have the sociology backing. I could get into doing that. So not only do I have that, I have this. Um, but one other thing, Aquarius, you have an armada of ships coming in. So you're going to have more than you're going to have multiple choices. Um, and I don't think that any choice that you make um, is going to be wrong. Like I said, you got the backing of the angelic forces behind you with whatever you choose to do. As long as it's done in integrity. All right, Pisces. I love Pisces. I say this all the time. They're my. I don't know what it is about Neptunian and Pisces energy for me, but I don't know if it's the fact my grandfather was a Pisces. Oh, there we are, the King of Cups. Oh, Pisces. Cool. You're coming into emotional maturity and um, you're going to bring a lot more to the table than what I think intuitively to your relationships and what you had in the past, Pisces. And um, allow if you're dealing with another water sign, um, I really feel like there's a culmination of coming together and uh, just allowing... Um, spirit to speak to you emotional security and emotional maturity right here i'm gonna pull one more card for pisces if you don't mind one more for pisces okay we've got another one. Oh, the four of wands nice the marriage card the stability card exactly what i was talking about pisces 
So the 11-11, you very well could be dealing with a twin. Get looking for it. What are you and thinking, Mike? I've got... Um, the Judgment card. So it looks like with Judgment, this is really awakening you to your highest purpose. And the specifics of that are the cards you pulled. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, the, that's the Emperor right there and the Four of Wands? It's the Four of Wands and the King of Cups. The King of Cups, there we go. So yeah. that's beautiful. And emotional maturity and as, you know, coming into the fullness of, you know, uh, the stability within themselves and within their partnerships. Like we said in sponsoring this whole reading is the Hierophant. And the Hierophant with the judgment could be an awakening of their belief system that kind of, it's like they just now got a facet of how their magic works and now they're awakening to like, what they can do with it mm -hmm. for their world and community, something like that. Yeah, um, um, I look at I, I look at Pisces a lot of times as um, if one of my favorite movies is The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And I mm. look at Pisces, I, I take all the mutable signs and I can basically make them into this, like I, I can piece them into the sons of Adam and the daughters of Eve in that movie and Pisces is Lucy. They were the first ones to be able to go through that veil um, and, and actually be beyond that veil. And um, just with having that raw blind faith. And I love how we returned where we started because you pulled the Hierophant as a general influence for everybody. So there's definitely a lot of um, spirituality to come into. So um, let's play the three questions game. Um, you can start off, or you can ask any question, and uh, yeah. Are you sure you want me to ask any question, Mike? Any question. You could put me on the hot seat. Any question. All right. <laughs> I'm more of an Aries, so I like, I like risks. <laughs> Damn. So what inspired you to start reading, or to start, um, looking into like astrology and tarot, like what was it that really, um, what was the clicking point for you? Um, great question. So I didn't realize, I'm realizing more and more every time I answer this question and think about this, I had no reason to look into astrology. It was similar to you, like spirit called me into this because my knowledge of horoscopes, I never even thought to watch horoscopes because before I, I knew about a natal chart for some reason, like I still don't know, I don't remember what possessed me to start watching horoscopes because I went from like super Thanks. Christian to like, I'm watching horoscopes now and I'm getting into like, you know, African traditional religions. And this was happening while Jupiter was, coming out the first house. So I completely attribute this to Jupiter enlightening me. Um, like the star is called me, like it was just my time, but I never really had an interest. I never was like, oh, I'm into astrology. Like I just started watching horoscopes for some reason. I was like, wow, this is kind of, I was watching, um, oh, I was watching Michelle Knight. I was watching Marie Moore. The OGs, like when they would do the weekly horoscopes before I even knew how to do them. And then it wasn't until I got my chart read by Chris Wateki and the Leo King that I, I, my mind was, I didn't even know that you can read charts like that. And that was when I was like, this is it. Cause I've always been into Myers Briggs. I've always been fascinated with like personality profiling. And this just really, 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 uh, you know, put this in the bud. So someone asked, I thought we are watching you live on YouTube. How can you be live and at the same time typing without we seeing you typing? 
Uh, it's called a lag. I don't even know how to answer that question. How can I type it? Well, all I know is that when you see what you see, it's streaming for me quicker than what you see. I don't know how you can, how I could be, oh, I see what you mean, because I type something, but you don't see me typing. You're not seeing the live stream at the same time. You're seeing seconds after the live stream, okay? So other than that, yeah, I, I just really, I just really was like, this is it. Like this, 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 this is a whole new world and adventure. Um, I was, it was, I've never felt so much passion and excitement and wonder. And the rest is really history, you know? Um, That's definitely def Gemini. They're all about that wonder and um, wanting to, you know, expand their mind. They're an air sign, you know? And uh, the duality there and the contrast of, you know, the balance of light and dark. I really feel that Libra should be a, a dual sign as well. They're so- It kind of the scales. Mm -hmm. So, and that's that's what I love about Libra energy because they can balance the duality of, of Gemini mm -hmm. on their scale. So it's like our darkness isn't too dark for them. Like they know they know how to play they know how to play our games. <laughs> I'll say that they're smarter than us. That's why we love them. What it is, what it is. I'm a Libra, um, right? Or I, I like to say, yeah, which is which is amazing. Pluto there too. I, I like to say Gemini is smarter than Libra, but Libra is more intelligent than Gemini. And then Aquarius is genius. So yeah. you have smart, intelligent genius. But um, yeah, so um Jupiter was in Gemini around that time. So I love how you said the expansion. Like I little did I know that I was gonna be on this journey. Um, and this really kicked it off. So my question for you is how spiritual is the tarot for you? Do you feel like um, cause I love how you said you anointed the deck. So do you feel like the cards have any energy of their own or you can like channel energy through the cards or, um, I, I can now, um, <laughs> I, can channel, I can channel, um, all the signs. Most of my mm -hmm. stuff is channeled completely from spirit. Um, my, the majority of my readings. I have people that will comment and say, you're speaking from a different dimension <laughs> um, when I'm, t you know, when I would do live readings and stuff and cause I was speaking right to their situation. So whether it, it's, I, I, I feel that it's Holy spirit energy on here. Um, that's who I call, I call in my angels, my guides, Holy spirit and my ancestors. Everything else is I try and keep blocked out because, like I said, I live on Native uh, American territory here, um, so I have to be very careful um, with what I allow um, in my space. I sage That's constantly. Nice. This room is I constantly bet. being saged. Nice. That's such an interesting point. All Thank right. you for mentioning. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, I I do. Um, it has opened me up to a lot more. Like I, I'm actually going to see a Reiki master tomorrow night. Um, not mm -hmm. only do I help with people with um, their energy, but of course I need to take care of myself as well. And I'm really working at that whole self care, self love. Um, and I had actually met um, a shaman who does Reiki, so he's going to be uh, helping with some of my own energy. I'm so excited. I'm starting to get in, interconnected with other people within my, my own community that I felt so isolated for the longest time. Um, didn't, and now, like I said, there's other, other avenues that are opening up for me. Reiki. All right. I'm I guess. It's oh my yeah. We're, yeah. Your next question. Um, what are you, okay, and I know that you get this a lot probably, but what are your, what are your, I'm putting you on the spot. What are your true feelings on Aries people, on Aries women specifically? How do you feel about Aries? Aries? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, so I'll, I'll answer Aries and Aries women. So from my experience, the rawest 
and the coolest people I've ever met are usually Aries. Like those are those are people who like I can be myself around and like they're just I get intimidated because there's just this like masculine presence that's no bullshit. Um, but I'm glad you asked about Aries woman because that's really a connection. Um, it's my 12th house and it's and it's uh and and I noticed Aries and Taurus I sleep on. Like I'm so much more focused on the other woman on the zodiac that I forget that Aries women are like some of my best matches. Um, and that let me not say it like that because I don't want to make it sound like I don't focus on Aries like that. Like I've always and will always see Aries women as like hot. And I have Mars and Aries, so it's impossible for me to not have sexual attraction to Aries women. But I just love how it's like they sh we share that same sense of like lightheartedness. And I know with the Aries woman, they'll put me in check. If I ever was like way too feminine in the sense where like I'm just on some bullshit, I can count on an Aries woman to call me out on that and not be indirect or passive aggressive with me. They're so fun. Y'all are so fun to hang around and be with. We share Taurus, which is dope. And it's not until now that I'm older that I'm realizing um, there's a different side to Aries women that I wasn't aware of because I was more naive and not as like mature. So I'm really glad you asked that. I pull the Queen of Wands a lot, but yeah, I really, I really feel like I share a special affinity with Aries women. I know astrologically, uh, since there's a third house, eleventh house aspect, there there is some karma. But since it's my twelfth house as well, there's a spiritual connection too that I can't put my finger on. But now that as I step into my cap, I'll be able to understand more. I think there was a reason you asked me that too, because I, I've, I'm, I'm super drawn to Aries Moon Woman now too, but Aries Sun Woman. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aries Aries Sun Woman, I definitely feel like a, a true friendship with. Like it's, it's like they're cool. Like the drama that I would get with other women and other signs. It's not like Aries Woman wouldn't have drama, but it's real. It's no, it's not like it's, it's. I've never, I rarely see like, I've rarely had like fakeness with Aries women. Well, at all. I think some of that, honestly, um, has to do with this Uranus transit that we just had go through our first house of self identity. Mm -hmm. Um, all that mm -hmm. fake, if we were any bit fake, that was no. up. And, and another thing that I love about Aries women, y'all are forward. Y'all are forward. Like, um, shout out to, I won't say her name, but there's a particular Aries woman that doesn't even hold back. Like she, she, like loves, she talks dirty to me. She hits on me. It's like, it's like, I feel like the girl getting hit on by a dude, but I still love it. Cause it's like, I'm not used to women doing that. And I remember another Aries woman a long time ago, like, and, and, and it's predictable. Like I think this is a talk, like Aries woman will just pop up on me. And then just like dip, like this one Aries woman walked up to me and just started kissing me and just flirting with me. Like they, they have that masculine energy. That's not, that's so sexy. It's really sexy to me. We it's like, yeah, you do. I, I um, love that in women personally. Here's, here's the other thing. We go after what we want, but we will also, um, if it's not reciprocated, we will shut you off like that. Done. Yeah, you won't you won't hold on. You won't have attachments. It's like, okay. Um, and it wasn't like, especially in that kiss, it wasn't like we we tongued each other. It was just like packs. It was it was like she was, it was, it was, it, I wasn't used to that. I wasn't used to that. It was just fun though. It was dope. I was like, damn, I can, I feel like I could adventure with someone like this. And that, that's what really makes me appreciate fire signs because it's just a natural compliment to air. But oh, yeah. I don't think I focus, I don't think I focus enough on Aries as I should because I do this, I have this habit of like focusing on um, unavailable women. So I kind of stay single. But 
uh, which is dumb. But yeah, I really think uh, I, I really I'm glad you asked that. I, I do love Aries women. I, I think I think that y'all are amazing. Uh, well, I've been attracted to Gemini right men. It seems like every season I go into, those are the guys I've been attracting. It's been weird for me. A guy of a couple of Gemini I know that, that are like. Aries, um, my Gemini friend is married to an Aries woman from high school. I think that's dope. That is kind um, of my dope. Aries dad. My Aries dad married my Gemini mom, <laughs> but that was more the other uh, gender around. But interesting. Um, my question for you is, um, what is it like living in a Native American? ground or or territory do, do you feel uh the spirits more strongly there what's the culture like because I, I really feel there's significance in doing spiritual work too uh and being in an area like that which makes sense why you have to sage a lot yeah um the significance and like i said i'm i'm only like 50 yards from this main channel of water um so this was all sacred along here uh the Oneida Chief Shikalemi, um, it's more about respect and respecting the fact that um, they were the Native Americans that were here. And white men really pissed me off and the Europeans pissed me off about what they did to, you know, like I have that frustration with forced religion on what happened to Chief Shikalemi yeah it was a trust it was, i mean he kept peace he was the he was the peace dealer of this oh. era. yeah he was he kept the peace between um the different tribes um so living in a native america yeah i had a skinwalker in my house uh that i had to have a shaman come in and um remove so the land was definitely cursed because of the way that and I, like I said, intuitively, I got this It's because of our river um, and what they had done to it, um, pumping pollution into it. He's pissed off about that. Me and Chief and, and we have, have a little bit of a, a thing. We, I channel him sometimes. Like I, me and him speak spiritually, intuitively. Mm. So it's more about so, respect. Respect, yeah, I feel you on that. Okay, wow. You know, and, you know, as far as being, you know, with with my faith and stuff, like I said, I'm spiritual. I'm not. I don't. Yeah, I love Jesus. I I know the Bible, but I do not call myself a Christian. Mm. I, I love Jesus. <laughs> That's it. Sailor Sailor Heart Horizon is Libra, by the way. Um, and we are on the last, um, this land does need healing. We are on the last round of question. Okay. Um, what can I think for this last question? I want to make it a good one. We're going to talk about politics. <laughs> um, Okay. So, um, what would you say, um, your, your opinion on the upcoming election? Um, are will you vote or won't you vote? I guess I would like to ask. You're asking the important questions. Okay. Um, Libra in me and the cap, I want to know, like, now, do you think you'll vote or or will you um because I know like a lot of people in our community are like, I don't like either candidate. I, I'm just going to stay out of it. Uh, yeah, it wasn't until recently that I've tapped into my spiritual path like never before. What I'm really meant here for is a North Node Aquarius and, and a Midheaven Aquarius. So the only time I ever voted was 2008 for Obama. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to lie. I voted because he was black. I'm, I'm, I was one of those black people who voted because he was black. I, I, I thought it was time for a change. You know what I'm saying? Fast forward now to uh, David Banner. David Banner is a very prominent black activist in the community 
who says that Obama hasn't done shit for black people. So that just kind of like flipped my mind. Um, no hate towards Obama, because I don't see it as just like a president. I see it as an administration. You know, one man can only do so much. He's definitely tried to pass bills and fight Republicans and work on being bipartisan. But I don't, I don't, I realize I, I didn't vote for him. Um, I didn't vote at all 2012. I didn't vote 2016. And I'm not going to vote 2020. So I don't, I purposefully don't stay involved in politics. And I don't really talk about it either. People say if you don't vote, then you, your opinion doesn't matter. I don't believe that, but I don't have any opinions regardless about uh, politics unless I'm asked like this as well. And given given where I'm headed in my spiritual path, I realized I can't vote. I can't, yeah. I can't, I will not vote. I won't get involved with politics outside of just being an objective observer because I'm, fa I'm fascinated with politics as far as like the events that are happening. So I could look at Hillary, I could look at Trump. The way that I talk about Trump, people will think that I'm a Trump supporter. Uh -huh. And I'm a true so biased. Supporter. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm a true supporter. I, I definitely know that. Like you're, you're just kind of yeah. like, um, whatever. <laughs> you know, he's there, he's saying, president, like you accept it. And, um, but you're very, you know, you're just non-biased about the whole, the whole thing. And well, my, my views on politics, my views on politics are so like, I never, I never knew what they were until recently. Like, I didn't know if I really was like non-partisan or, or, or conservative or liberal. But uh, it wasn't until I took a class about um, the rhetoric of criticism that kind of taught us about like how to tell. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's there's conservatives, conservatives want things to be how they used to be, right? When things were good, make America great again. And then you have liberals who want yeah. to change the system. They wanna use the system to change the system. And then you have non-partisans who are moderate. They're like, nothing needs to change, I'm, right? I'm libertarian. I, if I would say I'm anything, it'd be more stay away from my guns and my weed and we're good. Like just stay out of my life. That's all I want. I yeah. I respect libertarians because they feel that taxation is theft. And I respect yeah. that so much. Yeah, it's complete theft. Taxation, yeah. that's why 1776 happened. And, and it, that, that's the most ironic part. Like 1776 mm -hmm. happened for taxes and we're doing it again. Yeah. But, and no one can deny the effectiveness of taxation. So I'm not going to say taxes don't work, but I still think it's theft. But I've regardless heard. of that, you have the retroactive, um, not retroactive, but the the reactionaries who want to, they're more like a, um, they're more, they can be, re, 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 they're more people who kind of enforce things to be the way it used to be. And then I'm more of a rebel. Like, I don't believe the system works at nope. all. I think it's fundamentally flawed. So as a rebel, I'm not gonna be conservative. I'm not gonna be liberal. I'm not gonna take part of it so when people say that my vote doesn't count, it's not that my vote doesn't count. If there was a third party that aligned with my interests, I would vote. I'm just not gonna vote for someone that I don't align with. That's that's a mm -hmm. lie. You know, one of my favorite people is Ron Paul. Um, I love Ron Paul. Ron. Yeah. yeah, like his, I'm more of an anarchist though. The whole thing needs to come crumbling down. Um, mm -hmm. needs to come crumbling down. And it, need, it oh. needs to take smart people with integrity that need to rebuild. From know. scratch. And that's what Pluto and Scorpio is there for. I mean, some Pluto Scorpios are gonna abide by the system. So just because you have Pluto and Scorpio doesn't mean you're gonna do that. But it's it's quite ironic too, because I was destined to be here in Vegas. I'm a UNLV rebel now. So it's like I'm living my purpose. But the thing is like I I really I really channeled, and and I don't want to just say I channeled, I came up with this on my own heart, but I, I picking up, aligning with my destiny, like I don't acknowledge territories at all. Like I'm rebellious in a sense where it's not just US, like I feel like every single country and territory that exists was not founded in integrity. And so it should not exist. I feel like I can get in trouble for saying this right now too. This, this might be a bit of treason, but I'm not gonna vote 
any elections. I'm not going to abide or or pledge allegiance. Pledging allegiance to a flag is so mm -hmm. spiritually damaging. You're giving away your sovereignty because of you know something that was set up by people a long time ago who knew what they're doing. I'm not going to I'm not going to hate on what they're doing because they were destined to do that. But mm -hmm. as a young man that's stepping into his own power, am I going to do I really align with these ideals? So it's something that as I'm stepping into my Saturn return and many other people are realizing, I pledge allegiance to space. Like there's a galactic law. Yes. There's and that's really more so what I wanna really abide by. So I'm not gonna vote this 2020 elections. I like to look at it though. You know, the Bible says, honor your leaders. Yeah. And it makes sense. You, you gotta pray for the people running your running the country or whatever. But yeah. I like to look at politics from an objective stance where it's like, I read the charts, I see the trends. Okay, this is going to happen because it's relevant. These are people who- And it's so cool that, you, that you're able to be able to pick that stuff out and, <clears throat> and explain it to the rest of us and then be able to channel um, the way that you do it. And then when it plays out, it's like, well, the stars all lined up. And one of the things- Exactly. You know, it, it makes sense. And- Yeah. Honestly, they would be smart to hire somebody. They would be smart to hire astrologers. I cannot believe- They have to. Yes, I cannot believe astrology has been left out until like the last 100, 100 years. Like it, that's why I probably, I, I know I've had past lives where I've been killed for doing what I do. Um, I was destined to do <laughs> Like I know this and Joan of Arc was um, so I'm kind of a modern day Joan of Arc. I would like you, have you ever seen the movie, The Men Who Stare at Goats? No, I have not. I'm gonna see it again. Cause the first time I saw it, it was inspired. Like, I don't even know why I ended up seeing it, but I was I was too young to get it. But I think it's starring George Clooney and it, it's supposed to be fictional, I think, but it's about a, a private sect of the government that paid for psychics people who can like do telekinesis, like they stared at goats until the goats fell down. So it's like a secret operative of the government. I do not believe that our government does not have astrologers. I feel like gov our gov I feel like some government officials pay astrologers, but they have to tax the expense as something miscellaneous because they don't want to let people know. I, I think in this government that was founded with such precision and, and, and it's Masonic background, I cannot believe there are no astrologers that are involved at all. So that's why I like, it, it's gonna come off that I support Trump, but I support truth. So yeah. I can read a chart like Trump and I can back what Trump's doing. And I feel like that's why I'm perfect to talk about politics with, because I'm not biased. I don't, I don't like conservatives. I don't like liberals. I have some conservative elements and certain liberal elements, but I think the Democratic Party is flawed. I think the uh, the Republican Party is fundamentally flawed. I think the system is flawed. So the only bias I would have is being against the system. But when I talk about candidates, I don't talk in favor of one or the other. I talk objectively. And, and that's how politics and I agree be. with that. That's why I, I wanted to ask. Um, I just want to ask because of me going to school and stuff like that and having a sociology major, I'm always looking at the macro and the micro level of everything. Um, yeah. Especially when it comes to politics. A lot of my uh, classes um, had to do with political science and stuff like that, so. So, um, um, I wanna look up Project Stargate. I haven't read it or heard about that, thank you. And, and Macomb. So my final question for you is, are there, what are like two energies that are reaching out to you? If, if so, like, are there any, are there any main energies you like to call on as of late? Um, any planets, any deities, any, any energies? Oh, yeah. I think you did it before. I Saturn like a sucker now. Saturn. Okay. That's yeah. A um, yeah, I can channel Saturn like a sucker. And, um, a lot of times I'll call on Mars because that's my ruling planet. And um, I can tap into those two really easy. Um, uh, Neptune's done. After, you know, a couple hits of weed and channel Neptune a little bit, that's a, that's a good thing. 
<laughs> yes. Oh my God. Yes. Um, and of, of course, I always, I I always um, talk to Holy Spirit a lot, and um, just ask what what He wants. Um, do you feel like the Holy Spirit is gonna be? Do you think the Holy Spirit in astrology would be more like the Moon or Neptune, or or maybe? It's Neptune. It's Neptune. Nice. Yeah. Interesting. It's Neptune. Nice. Until you can actually push through that veil, like the understanding of, of biblical things for a lot of people, you get a whole different facet of um, spirit um, in the written word. Um, as as it says, the Bible's been the written word has been purified over seven times. So mm. each scripture has seven several seven different meanings. Imagine that the number seven. But um, yeah, I, I love Neptune. And I would say that that is definitely Pisces energy and definitely Holy Spirit. They're across the veil. They can bring back mysteries um, that we don't understand normally that you wouldn't normally get. Beautiful. So it's definitely not Saturn. That, that's like the Godhead. That makes me think that the Trinity might be um, Aquarius, Pisces, and, and Aries. <clears throat> if Aries is more like the son of God and um, Aquarius is like the father sky, but that's that's a reach. Um, other than that, um, <clears throat> this was such a great peace talk. Thank I, you, this I is really it. Sorry it took so long to figure out how to get on with you. Like, it is what it is. Honestly, I think it's because like it's no coincidence. The moon is like twenty nine degrees cap, and I think the dark forces didn't want us to go on while the moon was in cap. I mean, I don't want to just outright blame dark forces, but I'm gonna outright blame dark forces because we, yeah. like right now, right now is we can't. Or maybe maybe it wasn't dark forces. Maybe it was meant to happen this way because right now that we're finishing. The moon, like once we end this broadcast, immediately after, the moon's going to be in Aquarius. So it's wow. kind of like we closed out the moon and cap energy for everyone, which is pretty our awesome. Our moon's in cap. That's so cool. Oh, oh, yeah. And our moon's are Yeah. So the, the, um, the final question I have for you is, of course, I have your YouTube channel below. So please, please, please make sure you subscribe to Blue Flame Integration. Um, how can people reach you and what services do you offer? Well, I, I do energy clearing and cord removal. Um, I started, uh, I've noticed a lot of the people who have been drawn to my channel have been um, abused or um, have a hard time letting go of, of attachment um, to things. So um, that's one of the things that I've been doing is energy clearing and um, cord removal, which nice. takes, I use, um, I also started, um, which I'm sending you one of these, one of these uh, healing stones. Yay. These are super cool. Um, they have been over at the river on the full moon. I took them, had a shaman bless them, um, as well as uh, they were at the fire ceremony for the Sagittarius full moon as well. So um, yeah, you'll be getting one for your birthday. Thank you for sending me your PO box, but they can reach me at, um, my, if they get on my channel, they can reach me at uh, my email uh, that I usually have in the description box. Sometimes I forget to put it in there, but uh, I hate that description box whole thing. <laughs> That's the whole Aries in me. And then Saturn's like, go back and do that. Like, yeah, you're right. And do you have any final word of advice for anyone embarking on this spiritual journey? Open, keep your mind open. Always um, try not to be closed minded to the opposite way of thinking, I guess. Um, allow all facets of spirituality to mold and shape you instead of being confined in a box, I guess. That would probably be the best um, advice that I could give. It's not an easy road by far going through dark nights of the soul and going through um, soul rebirth and transformation is not an easy process. Mm -hmm. Trust, 
I know. It's been a rough one. And if it, there's any Taurus out there, good luck with Uranus. <laughs> Being a fixed sign, man. Ouch. How do you and, think uh, how do you think Taurus will fare out with all of this? With both of us having Venus and Taurus, what does this mean for us, Mike? Well, honestly, I feel like you're talking about Uranus, right? For Taurus? Yeah. Well, you and I both have Venus there in our natal chart. Yeah. So Uranus is going transiting through there. So Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, personally, ever since Uranus has gone there, my psychic connection with my imaginary girlfriend has been off the charts. Um, for those of you who don't know, I, I have a boo thing in another world and, you know, we connect in the 12 house. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like the central connection I have is like off the charts. Like I'm so much more psychic when it comes to cuddling, when it comes to, I've I've like evolved my my sexuality, my sex game, um, my cuddling. Like I'm going to talk my shit. I, I'm into my own heart, but I think that it's going to take relationships for us and incorporate our our psychic gifts fully and put us in relationships where like it's no longer just one sided. Uh, and and I feel like for Taurus in general. It's been so underestimated. Uranus is going to make Tauruses a force to be reckoned with. Like oh, people, people, people already kind of admired Taurus, but people are going to look at Taurus like, "Whoa, I didn't know you had that in you mm -hmm. at all." Like I knew, I knew you were dope. Yeah, little twisted. Twist. I knew you were dope, but I didn't know you were like Scorpio dope, dope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Scorpios are pretty dope. <laughs> Yeah, I give no. like I said a shit ton of credit, man, because they're born into a really rough sign. Yeah, they are. They keep so much of their pain hidden and expect people to understand it, but at the same time, it's probably not the easiest to speak of. So I usually do it understand it, though, Mike. That's the creepy part for me. I kind of like get that, like that whole. Pluto is still kind of a mystery for me, but um, I feel like Pluto comes out a lot in my dreams. Like it's it's odd. Some of my dreams can be really fucked up and dark. Excuse my French, but they it they can. Um, I'm like, where'd that come from? <laughs> I don't know if it's because of the transits right now with me. I don't know, but like this has been my whole life. I've had, I've had crazy dreams with past ancestors that passed on and stuff. I've seen wow. vision, like telepath. I've started to be able to tele have telepathy with my animals. And um, I I know what people are thinking and it's kind of freaking creepy. <laughs> that's Neptune and Sag to me. I think that's, I think you just explained Neptune and Sag very well, especially with the visions. Mm -hmm. um, oh, one moment. Okay. Okay, so yeah, thank you guys once again for um, the, the, the comments on this were awesome too. Everything about this peace talk was dope. So expect Lisa to come back on. This is gonna be really dope. We, we could uh, break down some more tarot, talk more spirituality. Um, Y'all stay blessed as always. I am writing an intro and to class though. You're what? I'm gonna be writing. I'm writing an intro to tarot class, so I started that's, that. That's super awesome. Yeah. So y'all, y'all stay blessed as always, and Much until fun. next time, peace out. <laughs>